Welcome to Norway, the land of the Viking. Welcome to my training film. I'm here to inspire you and educate you in the way of the Viking. I'm going to let you in on the secrets I never told my competitors before. So welcome you all, Viking power! Sven Carlsen was born in Norway in 1967. From a young age, he desired strength and began lifting weights. His first Norwegian powerlifting title came at the age of 16. World medals soon followed. 30 Norwegian powerlifting records, three European and one world record. He'd had enough and moved to bodybuilding. He soon gained the Mr. Norway title and in 93 finished second at the World Games and earned a coveted IFBB Pro Card. He competed at the New York Night of Champions but a severe muscle tear forced him into retirement. He pondered over his sporting future and decided he'd make a challenge for the title of world's strongest man. In Malta in 99, he took third place behind famous Finns Yanni Vertinen and twice champion Joker Amala. The following year, he took the silver trophy in Sun City, South Africa, again behind Vertinen. Finally, in 2001, on the banks of the Zambezi River at the Victoria Falls in Zambia, the Viking became the world's strongest man of 2001. Along his way, Sven has left the wake of world records. The Stones, the Super Yoke, a Pollen's Axle, Tire Flip, and most recently, the Log Press. The man the strength world knows as Viking Power Sven Carlson has decided to share his strength secrets. Enough history. We all knew that I was handsome. That's no big secret. Looking at half naked men don't make you strong. Let's get down to business and go training.
actually getting warmed up. You know, there's a big weight we're going to start with here. You know, to, to start with the ochre is 365 kilo. The body needs to be used to the weight. So what I actually do in a competition, just go over and I pick up the yoke, just lift it for the first time. And then three or four very short runs with the weight. And then I'm ready to start, boom. But when I'm in training, I do it from a slow start. Here I can start with whatever weight I want. And I can go up. I usually go like in three steps until I reach the actual weight of like 365 kilos. And I also do sprints in the old race. Should be very light weights, like 265, 300 kilo, and only 15 meters. That's what I'm going to do now. Now for a real competition weight, 365 kilo, 800. Back, Mr. Pedomowski. So now it's time for the Paul Maxwell, an event that started to get into the strongman circuit this year. And uh, I have to tell you, it's one of my favorites. I used to have the world record in this, and uh, I tend to take that back next year. And uh, I have very good technique in this. There's actually three ways to lift the axle. One would be the continental way, the way the most strong men do it. And that would be like for light weights, double overhand like this, you lift the bar into your stomach, but you're not allowed to have it on your belt, so you have to. Out of the tear and then you clean it up to your chest and press it overhead. That's technique number one. And you can do the same thing here when the weights are getting heavier, the reverse grip. Same thing for a fat guy, it's very simple. Just turn the grip and clean. The other way is for the really strong guys with a good grip. And that's the double overhand weightlifting style. Just hold it here, pull it, up, clear it all the way. A guy like Raymond Dogmanis can do that too as a weightlifting background. Actually training that myself to be able to do big weights that way because it saves you a lot of energy. And there's my way. And that's a reverse grip. And I clean it like this. Hold to my chest. 
I changed the brake and that back overhead. I'm lying now and thinking this can be. So what are you going to do now then, Sven? We're going to go up to one sixty. Do two sets of reps with 140 kilo. Ready for set one. So after I follow Axel, I just load up the log, one set of 100 kilo, one set of 140, just to get some reps. My shoulders are warm now, so I don't need so much warm up. Let's get ready to rumble. I need some chuck on the chest, so the log don't roll. Now we're going to do some loading as I said. This is like a perfect way to finish off the workout. Straight some cardio and I do that with loading. I have cakes here weighing around 90 kilo. That's a perfect way for me. And my distance of running would be like five meters. And I'll do that in a set of three. Set number two! And what I do, if I can't get enough reps with the weight I'm finishing off with, I drop the weight and I do some more reps. I even drop it one more time to do even more reps. That will be my working set for today.
What's the biggest weight you've ever lifted in this gym? I've done in training uh, 170 for three. I never tried the max. The max I ever done was in Stockholm when I broke the world record and it was 185. But I've done three with 170 here. Step number one. So this is the one with the 120. I just, as you see, I have to twist my face not to get the log in my face. And that is because I use as high angle as I can because that's the way it works in Strongman. Right row, not the bodybuilding way, but a strongman way. This is how you can flip a car faster than anybody else, or throw a weight higher than anybody else. So follow me. I do one warm up and then one working set. secret to get strong in the crucifix. Follow me, I just do it. So for my tire flip and my stone lifting, I will do curls first. So that will be my biceps workout. I will normally do a barbell curl or my secret curl. And my secret curl is actually doing a curl. Yes, you see it, it's a log. And I will do that instead of a hammer curl. That will give you a strong tire flip, strong stone lifting and just watch this. I will do maybe one or two warm ups and then I will fill the weight up to 100 kilo and do as many as I can. Warm up. 
Christ. You need to clear out the force for the tire for The tire we're gonna flip is 500 kilo. It's a man's tire. So we need a little sticky spray here. Second would be my time with one eight. I'm two, between 30 and 35, so just have a general idea that I do it in the right pace. Okay. Let's go outside and do some real Viking farmer's walk. After all, we are in a Viking country.
King Power! The Viking Mouth! Viking Power! So that finish up my event training for today. So let me take you back to the gym and show you some real workout in the gym. It's two o'clock, let's go train some weights. How many are you going to do? Just one. Just one. He looks like your son, Sven. <laughs> Could be. 
<laughs> Maybe. Maybe it's not. <laughs> <laughs> you weren't the milkman. You weren't the milkman in the oh, town. It's one of the best waterfalls in Norway's in the Acres. She's just like his father with legs, with his father with skinny legs. Oh. Uh, probably, maybe, even better arms. He's strong. Got a 365 in squat, at the age of 20. That's 800 pounds in squat. 20 years old. The next Viking from Norway has a bodybuilder. <laughs> It's too short to become worse on his man. <laughs> Otherwise he would. Okay, now I'm going to do the Carlson squat. It's actually just hack squat facing the other way. It's a perfect event to get stronger in truck pull and tire flip. Because you're going to, you're going to see it's the same movement. That's it, just warming up. Now, now we're just finishing up with some quite easy leg extension just to get some the last energy out of my legs. Uh, we can do so we're going to do three sets of 20 reps. Strong calves for truck pulls. After the warm up, follow me to two sets of twenty. Ah! 
So what exercises did you do on back day then, Sven? My cornerstone exercise for the back would be the deadlift. If you can't deadlift, you can't win World Service Man. <laughs> So Sven, what's the maximum weight for today? We try the first set with 320. If that goes easy, we're gonna go up to like 350 and try that for maybe like three or four weeks. Great today. I'm gonna to try to pull 370 or one or two reps. I feel like I'm strong today. Seated row for hand over hand. Last. have to be fat to be strong. <laughs> okay, now we can listen to Nashville and see if they notice. Hold on. He's in awe. He's in Yeah. I have to
for my endurance, I do the Concept 2 row, three sets of 500 meter as fast as I can. Let's get ready to row! Look, what was your time? Look. One minute 18. That is excellent, Spen. One set, two to go. Of course, being strong is not only about training, it's also about nutrition. Uh, it's very important, but it don't have to be complicated. It can be very simple. Like me, I start my morning with the oatmeal and some skim milk, and then I go up with some protein powder and some vitamins, minerals, etc. So just come here, I can show you. So after the oatmeal, protein powder. Protein, very important. I use some pure protein powder. We know sweeteners or whatever and uh, mix that in the blender one two do you always take the recommended dose no i take what i feel for for me it will be like 40 grams of powder this is pure protein so and is it mixed with milk then or? no i just mix it with water So how many protein shakes a day do you take? Depends, you know, I uh, sometimes it's like four or five, sometimes just two. So for me important is CLA, just for the energy of it for me. It's also a very good fat burner. Chrome. The chrome does what? It stabilizes your blood sugar. Oh, okay. And then all in one, just vitamins, minerals, whatever. And copper, all to get it balanced. And omega three. All these fat acids are very important. Is that because you have such a low fat diet that you need to get all the essentials? Yeah, and it's it's very good for your body. So now I'm ready. I have whatever I need. And that finish off my breakfast. So all the pills go down in the morning then? Yeah, and I always take that together with the food since I have a sensitive stomach. So I think that's wise for me. And then for lunch, I usually have chicken or some meat together with some vegetables some pasta or rice and then before training again I take a big gainer drink then I go training so you train in the afternoon normally? normally I will yeah and then uh, I take some um, carbohydrates after the training again in drink or in food? in drink and then I come home I have dinner that would normally be fish and potatoes and vegetables and before bedtime again I have some protein shakes and if um, I don't train, I usually, if I, it's over three hours since I've been eating something, I usually would go to a protein drink. Right, so in, in fact you only eat three solid meals a day, the rest is in protein or in yeah, supplement? Yeah, because I use so much time training usually. So uh, it all comes from, uh, from three basic meals and then supplements. And how about the protein bars? Protein bars I can eat, but uh, it will come as a supplement, a substitute to uh, a regular meal. And do you have a mega dose vitamin C? Uh, when I'm starting to feel sick, I usually do that. Uh, but normally I would take like two or three grams a day. Otherwise, um, when I'm starting to get a cold, I would go up to as much as 30,000 milligrams. 30,000 really. So how about when you want to get yourself ready for training? What kind of supplements 
do you mix do you mix caffeines or anything or, or do you no for me that would normally just be a cup of coffee before my training because i don't drink coffee normally just before my training i have a cup and that's usually enough to get me going so how about your supplements before and after training good question colin because this is very important what you put in your body just before you start training because this is actually the gas that you're going to use so for me that would be a big drink of gainer's fuel and I mix that in water and I take that like an hour before I go training and I have at least one liter of fluid before I start training within the first hour before I start. Is that just carbohydrates then? That's just mainly carbs, a little bit protein but mainly carbs, yes. Okay. And then after training again, more carbs but then I would go into a carbohydrate drink like energy drink. And then, to finish that up, I take a lot of brand chain amino acids because that's get burned when you do the training. So I take at least 10 to 15 of these after every training. And is that the only time during the day you take the, these, the branch chains? Not really. I take amino acids all the day. I would take them in between meals, you know, to fill it up because I have a big, big body that needs a lot of, a lot of uh, fuel to get running.